Hello, my name is Charlie Wade, and I'm very privileged to be talking to the distinguished photographer Karen Pasillas. And just recently, she is making her name for her very, very special photography of the Lusitano horse. Now, I have to ask you, Karen, and it's an absolutely obvious question, but how was your journey? Where did it begin? Where did your journey into photography start? Thank you, Charlie. First, it's such a privilege for me to be here talking with you. I began photographing seriously in about 2005. After a lifetime of work in the printing and binding industry, uh, and, and another lifetime as well, looking at the great masters and museum collections, I was asked by Dominique Barbier, the French classical dressage master, to come and photograph for his third edition of Dressage for the New Age. And that led you to the Lusitano horse. But where was this? It did. It was the first time I'd been able to sit on a Lusitano. I've been a rider all of my life, but 2006 was the first time riding a Lusitano in California, in the wine country. And after California, then I went to Brazil for a number of years, several times each year. And I, I began to learn much more about the horse, much more about the different breeders and the characteristics of the horse. And finally then to Portugal in 2011, where I've made my home since 2012. So tell me, why do you love the Lusitano so much? Oh, that's a wonderful question. I love all horses. I, I think that they're a gift to each of us, or for t to the people who enjoy them. But the Lusitano above all, and I've ridden thoroughbreds and, and wonderful French horses and, and German horses and ponies and, and anything that I could get my hands on all of my life. But the Lusitano to me has a quality of wholeness that I hadn't discovered in, in other breeds. How do, you, how do you define that word, wholeness? Uh, um, I feel that the Lusitano comes to us fully formed He's not wanting anything. He knows who he is. He has this character of nobility and generosity, strength, character, uh, that exists whether we're interacting with him or not. And yet the Lusitano, above other breeds, has a desire for a partner. And he offers himself to us when we are fully available to him if we're grooming our horse and if we are taking care of his stall and riding him with tact and compassion and sensibility, then he is going to mirror for us all of those qualities of generosity. But you're a photographer. Can you show me a photograph that incorporates that, that wholeness and everything that you've been saying? I hope that I can. All photographers want their feeling when they're making their work to be able to come through or, or we failed. I have a photograph here that I like very much of my uh, cousin by marriage, Ana Batista. She's a female bullfighter here in Portugal. And I think this photograph of Ana in movement with her horse, Fandi, as if they were one, well, I think it speaks of the essence of the Lusitano mm. and how we can become one with our horses. Mm. But now we've got several books here in front of us. Um, can you give me a little bit of history as to, as to when they were published, for example? Oh, yes. Oh, well, we do have, we're looking at two books just now that were both published in late 2018, early 2019. And two books at one time was a lot of work, mm -hmm. but uh, also very enjoyable. I had to, well, my publisher, Veritas Editions, asked me, uh, to produce a book of, of my color work, a retrospective, if you will, of mm. the last 13 or 14 years of photographing the Lusitano. And so that was the impetus for the first one. You're looking at a, a trade press edition, a book that I'm very proud of, but accessible for all. That brings us to this absolutely wondrous piece. And can you talk us through this? I'd, I'd be happy to. This is what we call a fine press edition. Uh, my publisher again, Craig Allen Huber, asked me to, well, he asked me a number of years ago if I'd be interested in creating a book of platinum palladium prints of my work. And of course, I jumped at the chance. <laughs> May I open it? Please, please. My, look at that. And so can you talk us through the production and who was involved and so yes, on? Yes, please. This is... This is a work from many artists involved. I'm just one of them, okay? Mm. The, 
the concept behind the book was that I wanted every piece of it to reflect uh, a part of the character of the Lusitano. So beginning with this wood that we have that was created in this wonderful clamshell from Jim Fitzgerald, um, it's black walnut from Kentucky and Ohio, and to me it reflects the strength of the Lusitano. And then we open the case and we have this piece that cushions the book, if you will, inside. It's a lovely piece of hand felted wool created by a wonderful artist in Oregon. And I wanted this to reflect what the baby Lusitano looks like, what the foals look like uh, when they're born. Yes. They're all very dark, and then over a period of five, six, or seven years, about 60% of them dapple out into this glorious white horse that uh, we know as a Lusitano. But they start like this. My, how fascinating. May we open the book? Please, please. Look at that. And the inside here, what's... Uh... <laughs> this was the very first piece that was decided for the book. This is, uh, these are individually made pieces of paper from cave paper in, in Minnesota, I believe. And when I saw this paper, uh, it reminded me very much of the coat of one of my Lusitanos as he was working in the summer. Oh. So he's a little bit sweaty. The sun has bleached his coat a little bit, but we see these marks in him like oh, this, and it's this lovely buckskin color. Oh, my. And on we go. Oh, look at this. Go. So each page in the book, well, it, everything is hand-bound. So hand-sewn, hand-bound, mm. but also hand-letter-pressed. If mm. you take your hand across here, you can feel the indentation. I can. I can. Yes. Yes. Oh, gosh, that lends much gravitas to it. <laughs> Look at this, then the contents. The contents. Everything in the book is done. And then in we have forward in two languages. And, and tell us a little bit about the person who wrote the forward, Lady Sylvia Locke. Yes, well, a countrywoman of yours. Ah. Um, Sylvia Locke is much, um, much loved in the Lusitano community because she's done so much for the last 40 years to promote the Lusitano, certainly in Great Britain, but also around the world. Mm. And she was very generous with me and, and wrote this lovely foreword, which mm. is translated in English and in Portuguese, mm. of course. And then your introduction. My Karen. own introduction, yes. And then we go on. Mm -hmm. Beautifully laid out, beautifully designed. Thank you. Oh, and now we come yes. to the first. To the first print. First print. My. When my publisher said to me that he wanted to have Stan Klimek master printer do the work, I thought, oh my gracious, am I worthy? <laughs> yes, of course. And I, I still yeah. have that question, Charlie, but um, I'm still, I'm very happy to see the work turn out well, as it has. Absolutely wonderfully handsome piece. It May really I show is. you one thing? Yes, please. In a fine press edition, it's very important that all of the plates are numbered, signed, and editioned. So on the back, you'll see the title, and my own signature for each one, and the number of the edition. In this case, as I said, there are only 25. So this oh. print is number two of 25, yeah. as is the print of Gaston that we saw, yes. and so forth. So there are only 25 um, in the world, essentially. Correct, yes. Right. Snap one of them up, <laughs> my word. And on we go. And on we go. Oh, absolutely exquisite. You must have been completely thrilled when you saw this. I was. And, and you know, I enjoyed very much the process of writing about the images. Mm. Some of the writing that we see in the captions is about the horse. Some of it is about the breeder. Some of it is about the, um, the purely photographic aspect mm. and how the image came to be. Mm. Now, if I may ask, you, you made a point, um, a very modest point, if I may say, um, about this wonderful work being contributed to from other people. Oh, yes. And I noticed when I had a little flick through that on the back here, we've got, um, if I may, mm -hmm. we've got this really beautiful page here. And can you just help us understand the names of the people who contributed to this wonderful book and, and what their role was? I think that this is probably my favorite page in the book because it is a collection of artists that had to come together to fully realize this vision. And so we have uh, Craig Allen Huber, my, my publisher, and myself as, as the photographer, and then Lady Locke, um, Ed Marquand, uh, who helped with the design in the book, and Ryan Polish, um, Melissa Duffis, who did the, um, in all of the editing in the book. But then we get further afield, and we go to Sylvie Glatauer, who did the photogravure, uh, that's uh, 
is on the dedication page in the book. She's from Australia. Mm. And Lady Locke from England, uh, Jim Fitzgerald from Vancouver, Washington, Stan Klimek, who did all the prints from Santa Fe in New Mexico, and, and on it goes. So this mm. page for each of the books traveled around the world. Oh, marvelous. And every artist had to sign, and then each is hand-bound, of course, as is every page, into the book itself. Oh, that's excellent. And it's particularly generous of you to give them the credit that they, you genuinely believe they so deserve. Well, that's kind of you, but I think it's imperative. Mm, absolutely. Absolutely. Well. There's, there's one more thing in this box. Look in the corner there. Oh. Oh, my word, yes. Can you, can you tell me about this? This is a bonus. <laughs> well, what a bonus. Just another layer on the cake, if you will. Have, feel this. Feel this. Yes. Yes. That's so I wanted lovely. this to feel, to have this sense of the, the muzzle of the horse, because I, I, it's, it's one thing that I want to do when I go and see a horse. I mm. want to put my hand softly on his muzzle and mm. see if he'll mm. talk to me a little bit. Mm. So this has that feel for me. And this is essentially, to you, is the reminiscence of a horse's muzzle. Absolutely. It's that simple. Absolutely. And inside here, what do we have? We have three more prints. Oh my. Can you but, talk about them to yes, us? Yes, yes. Again, we have uh, in English and in Portuguese the description of each of the plates. But these prints are not platinum palladium. They're a little different in that they're gum over palladium. Mm. And that'll mean mm. something to, to other photographers and collectors. Mm. To me, it means an added depth in the portrait. Yes. And I chose these three vertical images. Well, one, the vertical won't fit in a horizontal format book. So this is an opportunity to include three prints that I like very much. And we have a print here of a very elderly horse, still elegant and stately mm. and full mm. of character. Mm. And an, much, yeah. another horse very dear to me personally, because he's the first Lusitano oh. that I came to, to know very well. His name is Larapio, and he's from a breeder here in Portugal, the Quimbra. Mm. But mm. he lived uh, the last 15 or so years of his life, maybe more, in California, and that's where I first encountered oh him. Oh, my. And, and completely white. Completely white. My. And the last one of a, a lovely fellow oh, yeah. named Nabucco. And every time I went to see him, he just had his head out over oh. the stall saying, please come and talk to me. <laughs> and I just thought he was beautiful. And you did. Yes. Oh, well, thank you, Karen, so much for showing us this absolutely remarkable and really breathtakingly beautiful um, artwork. Thank you, Charlie. Very sweet of you. Thank you. So tell me, Karen, how, how else do you fill your time? I mean, I know you're incredibly busy. Are you working on other books at the moment? I always have several books going on in my mind, but in fact I am working on one more at this time. And that is a continuation of a project that I began titled Loss and Beauty. The first book has been published and that was done in 2015. And I began the work for part two, if you will, in April of last year. And after another couple of years, I hope that to have a combined volume of that work. Yeah. And uh, but day to day, I'm working with my greatest inspiration, and that is my students. Mm. I maintain a fairly robust mentoring program, and I, no matter where I am in the world, I can talk with my students and encourage them and, and help them to find their way and, and encourage their endeavors, whether it's an exhibition or a book that they're working on, or simply becoming better photographers. Yes, I've met a few of them, and I must say they, they testify to the hugely positive effect you've had on their photographic oh. journey themselves. <laughs> Thank you. But tell me, where, where can people see your work in terms of exhibitions, obviously other books, but where can people see your work? I mean, if, if somebody wants to acquire your work, which I know many do, wh how would they set about doing that? Well, the easiest way is to go to my website and send an email, and all of that contact information is there or uh, the telephone is there as well. And of course there are the usual things in Facebook and other social mm. media between Instagram and mm. Twitter and those things. Mm. Um, and soon I'll have an exhibition of all of my horse work here in Portugal. And I'm very, very happy about that. Oh my word, do you want yes. to uh, illuminate us a little bit or is it <laughs> a secret? <laughs> no, it's not yeah. a secret, it's not a secret. There's a new restaurant opening in Lisbon, uh, the name of which is Acaseta. And a caseta is a little house, if you will, that the breeders have in Golgan, uh, a worldwide, well, a world-renowned festival for the Lusitano horse. And to be invited to the caseta by a breeder is quite 
a wonderful thing. So you go in and you talk about their horses and you talk about the festival that year and it's a very convivial kind of thing. So therefore the name of the restaurant. But the owner of the restaurant invited me to display uh, on all the walls a sort of permanent exhibition, if you will, of uh, some of my better Lusitano prints. Oh my word, so yes. a, 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 an, an indefinite yes. exhibition yes. for as long as yes. permanently up, oh yes. my word, in a, in Hopefully a restaurant. Hopefully adding a few new works every once in a while. Well, yes indeed. Yes. Oh, well, marvellous. And are, so if, when people want to acquire one of your works, when a member of your team will, will liaise with you and, of course. and you, you'll sign an, a limited edition of sorts, obviously. Yes, all the work is very limited edition, mm. yes. So Karen, this book here, Lusitano, Noble, Courageous and Eternal, is clearly, in terms of design and format and feel, a, a very big departure from Cavallo, Cavallo Lusitano. So can you tell us a little bit about this, which is clearly a beautiful book as well? Well, thank you. I broke all of the rules with this book. You know, I teach um, uh, photographic book design, sequencing, editing, all of these things, and I've done everything I tell my students not to within the pages of this book. <laughs> <laughs> but I have a reason for all of them. Yes, talk me through these, the reason. Thank you. Well, the first thing on the cover is I've got type over an image. A big no-no in my world, okay? Mm -hmm. Just a very big no-no. But I wanted it to be bold, I wanted it to be engaging, and not have the look of a fine art photography book. Mm -hmm. I wanted people to want to pick it up. Mm -hmm. And I think that this has this well, with the bold mm. blue color and the horse and movement, mm. I hope that it does mm. that. And, and in terms of accessibility, not saying that, that is, uh, Cavallo Lusitano is not accessible, the fine artwork, but this has got, a, I noticed, quite a number of photographs, quite clearly, that this one hasn't and yes. couldn't possibly. Exactly. But I, 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 thought, I looked through it at length and I found it absolutely delightful. Oh, thank and it you. reveals a lot about not just the horse, but the community around the, the, the breeding of the horse and so on. I hope so. The book uh, has very little writing in it. There are four chapters in essence. Mm. And to accommodate the design uh, that I enjoyed for the book, there's a foreword by uh, Dominique Barbier for me, uh, mm. but to accommodate the design, you see, I've, I've run an image over the gutter. Yes. This is the gutter for yes. all of the, the, the non-book arts people, yes. okay? Yes. Um, but of course I made sure that the entirety of the important part of the image was not through the gutter. But that leaves us with about a third of the page to do a nice essay. And that repeats four times throughout mm. the book. So whenever we are opening a chapter, we have this two-thirds image and one-third type. But then we go on to doing things like the full bleed. Mm. And then another chapter mm. opening. At the end of each chapter, there's the full bleed. So it's a signal, it's a silent signal, if you will, but in book design, that kind of repetition throughout the book means something. Yes, yes. I broke other rules too. I put uh, a, a bit of a crop here, again across the gutter, but I wanted it to be warm and inviting, and here I put a black and white image with a color image. Mm. And that's a tricky thing to do. Mm. It can be done, but in book design, it's a, mm. it's a tricky thing. Yes. And which two to involve to, for that transition. Exactly. Yeah. And then what happens in the page after? From the black and white page, mm. where do you go? Mm. Well, then we went to a very subdued, uh, traditional yes. treatment, if you will, with a white border around these two images, facing each other, dancing, if you will, together. Marvellous design. Oh, Absolutely marvellous. And a lot of people wouldn't, wouldn't, they'd appreciate the design, but they wouldn't realise how you've managed to to deal with that transition from black yes. and white to, to color and so All the thought that went underneath. Yeah, and here, but marvelous. Thank you. Yeah. And again, we have an almost black and white image with a very subdued image on this mm. side. And to keep it subdued, then a black border where this image is cropped. And I have to, as I have done, I hope, with Cavallo Lusitano, I must say thank you again to Mark Muse, who's always my, uh, partner in design, partner in crime, mm. when we get ready to put books together. Mm. And he was a tremendous help, as he always is, and his knowledge and life in printing has really informed all of these editions. Well, absolutely marvellous. Thank you. Karen Pasillas, thank you so much. Thank you, Chairman.